marathon swimmer Diana Nyad oh will be in the waters off the Valdez Peninsula of Argentina's Patagonia. Diana studies the endangered right whale. She joins expert diver Armando Jenik, making an effort to bridge the gap between man and this extraordinary animal. In Rwanda, Africa, Earl Holloman and Diane Fossey encounter the silverback gorilla. In South Africa, transatlantic balloonist Ben Abruzzo and Cheryl Teagues join the effort to help elephants find a safe home. And in Colorado, Bridal Veil Falls inspires a spectacular ice climb by the country's leading climbers. A daring expedition to a remote section of Antarctica leads Beverly Johnson and team members into the unknown. In Nepal, American kayakers pioneer the dangerous white water of the Arun River. And high above in the Himalayas, a team of women climbers attempts to reach the summit of Annapurna. The fact that they took with them a working radio and that we haven't seems to indicate they may have fallen on the way to five. The story of their ingenuity, skill, and courage is one of triumph and painful tragedy. We'll also be tarpon fishing with Paul Michael Glazer. I'll be grouse hunting with Steve and Cindy Garvey. Roy Clark, Dub Taylor, and Dan Haggerty join me quail hunting in Oklahoma. And we'll be bass fishing with Foster Brooks. Arnaud de Rosne windsurfs the Bering Straits and teaches Kathy Lee Crosby. While Larry Newman teaches hang gliding to pole vaulter Bob Segret. In Alaska, men and dogs race a thousand miles from Anchorage to Nome. In Maine, Ethel Kennedy and a group of New York City youngsters ride some unforgettable rapids. Cliff Robertson follows the Red Baron speed record attempt and its later tragic crash. And today... Ladies, gentlemen and ladies, this is an egg shoot. If you miss, you go down and you eat your egg. If I miss, the, the cameraman has to eat the egg. <laughs> we'll join Charlton Heston at a mountain man rendezvous on the set of his new movie. Might have a chance to establish a warmer relationship. Off Long Island, underwater cameraman Stan Waterman faces the largest concentration of great white sharks ever seen in the Atlantic as part of a scientific study. Sportsman. Brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company. Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Although he's dominated the world's oceans for 300 million years, the shark remains one of the most elusive of all predators, exciting the imagination and provoking our deepest primitive fears. No species of shark is less understood and more feared than the great white. He appears driven by an inexorable force. Focusing on his prey, he exhibits not the slightest concern about the presence of man. of the best-selling novel, Jaws, the American sportsman was in Australia with author Peter Benchley, who finally confronted the main character of his book firsthand. For both Peter and me, it was an extraordinary experience. And shortly afterwards, a similar confrontation was created for the movie version of Jaws. Actor Roy Scheider, and in the cage, okay, Richard okay, okay. Dreyfus.
whistles, no whistles. Equally thrilling were the scenes of widespread panic on a crowded Martha's Vineyard beach. It was the 4th of July weekend. On another summer afternoon, the shark returns to the Atlantic coast. Off Mauritius, Long Island, an unprecedented number of sharks had been attracted to the corpse of a fin whale, which had died of unknown causes. At least six great whites have been feeding on the whale's carcass. Local fishermen have converged at the scene, where they wait with an arsenal of deadly harpoons for the catch of a lifetime. A blue shark makes an appearance. Then a tiger shark, an uncommon sight in these waters. Disregarding the heavy traffic, he feeds off blubber that bears the markings of earlier sets of jaws. Soon one of the great whites is drawn close enough. After glutting himself on the carcass, he takes his leave, gliding directly below those who seek him, heading again for the open sea. Drop the stick on him if you want. But the harpoon strikes. And now, a furious struggle between man and beast. As in the screen version of Jaws, the movement of a flotation ball charts the course of the wounded shark. But the harpoon pulls away. He is free. Now a second white shark. And again, the harpoon takes hold. It's up to the captain and crew of the fishing boat, the rogue, to follow. For both sides, it's a test of maneuvering skill and sheer endurance. The battle is joined through the long night. Not until early morning do the fishermen prevail. On shore, the word has spread, attracting thousands to the dock at Mauritius Inlet. Ironically, as if life were reenacting the script for Peter Benchley's story, it's also the 4th of July weekend. The great white shark is nearly 14 feet long, weighing close to a ton. I spoke with the captain of the Rogue. Yeah, I'm Stan Waterman. I shot Blue Water White Death. Now that's a beautiful animal. He's still alive. Yes, I can see that uh, with the uh, nerve reactions. 14 and a half hours. Holy smoke. Uh, I think we just about killed him in the water. Yeah. Come on, guys. Back up, back up. The crowd is fascinated, horrified, titillated. The monster they fear is dead, and in death, distorted and horrible to see. The children years hence will tell their children. How about you, honey? How do you feel about the swimming thing? Does it bother you at all, or? No. Yeah, no. Not liar. Really. No, liar. Hey, she's too scared still. The presence of more sharks provides an opportunity for a unique scientific adventure. Is Gillette Foamy? The meditation is a sport fishing boat. For the special purpose of this scientific expedition, it is being fitted with a sophisticated sonar tracking device in its keel. From the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, scientist Frank Carey will lead a pioneering experiment to monitor the metabolism of the great white shark in its natural environment. The device being placed on the keel will receive signals from a set of transmitters which the scientists hope to attach to a shark. At the same time, a special cage for my underwater photography nears completion. Aboard another boat, the Sea Doll, as we leave Montauk at dawn, it's impossible for me not to recall another scene from Jaws. They got here, portable shower or a monkey cage. Anti-shark cage. Anti-shark cage. 
You go inside the cage. Cage goes in the water. You go in the water. Sharks in the water. Our shark. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. Mm -hmm. While my own cage is lowered, Robert Shaw's sarcastic lyrics mock my present situation. The risk is counterbalanced by the opportunity at hand. In the past, we've traveled halfway around the world to find the great white shark. This will be the first try by anyone in my own front yard, the Atlantic Ocean. It was remarkable to come across the dead whale. As long as the carcass continues to float and produce a slick, the odds favor us. Because when it's time to come up, if we have some action here and a real wild animal around, around no. I'd like you to have a good heavy line you're able to pull that cage up fairly close okay. with so I can get over the uh, transom, okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The 25-mile slick has also attracted thousands of seabirds. Their lingering presence means that more effort is needed to lure the sharks back to the site. If the birds take wing, we'll be in business. This has got one grizzly that's yeah. held together here. There's nothing like liver. Um, the sharks love it. Underneath the boat. Okay, there he is. He's going Look. underneath the boat, yep. swinging toward the stern quarter, the other quarter. He is. Let's watch that bait over here. Watch that bait over here. Mike, that's Papa. I seen him. Hey, Mike, how big is he? <laughs> He's going toward the wind. Suddenly, there's no more time to plan or think. It's time to get inside the cage with the camera as quickly as possible. I've been here before and still have a sense of tense expectation. The first sight of these huge animals is always a shock. Over here. Right over here. He's coming in. He's coming in toward the, uh, toward the whale. Now he's swinging over to a dick's boat. Visibility is very short. Advance warning is minimal. In the murkiness of the water, the shark is invisible. Up I saw him for a bit, then I lost him. It looked like he went down. His first appearance is a ghostly apparition. Then his features are clear. This one is every bit as large as the one recently brought to shore, and a lot more alive. on the underbelly of the dead whale. He dissolves into the haze. In order to signal my wish to be pulled in, I have to exit the top of the cage and stand on it with just my head above water. This is the most vulnerable time. As I kept my face underwater to watch for the return of Mr. Big, I missed the shouts of the crew. Oh, here he is, here he is, here he is. Here he is. He's back. He's back. He's in back. an instant, he's almost upon the cage, and I barely recovered his protection in time. <laughs> Observing even more closely, I had my best look at the huge animal, a male more than 14 feet long. Can you see 
Having given us his personal greeting, he glides grandly past the cage as if smiling and leaves me to gamble on a second try for the surface. Can't believe that. Uh, did you turn good. around and see that? Damn right I did. <laughs> Let me tell you, being out of that cage, cage with... and seeing him coming over the top of it, that is one heart stopper. <laughs> I bet you. You know, he is, he is so camouflaged, and the water is so turbid, and matching his color, that he's on you before you know yes. it. And underwater, you never see him more than about 10 to 15 feet away, and suddenly there's that face Huge. with that smile, mm. that certain smile. Mm. <laughs> Boy, that, that's a very interesting animal.